So today we're gonna be learning how to make these guys, uh, number one and number two here. Uh, these are really image focused title pages or uh, pages of the magazine or article. I'm gonna go over these, teach you guys how to do it and some tips and tricks. So let's get started. Okay, so we just have our standard eight and a half by 11 spread here uh, that I've created. First thing I like to do is go into our masters page Go into layouts and create guides. Now we might not necessarily use the guides, uh, but they are always there to help us. I like to do just a simple four and four um, and then lower the gutter a little bit. When you're beginning out, I really suggest using the grid, but once you get a little bit more experience doing this kind of stuff, it's okay to kind of not use the grid. Uh, but having a grid is always useful to um, basically lay out your page. Now we want to make sure that we want to click back into the page so that we don't use our a master page and do our design on it. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a nice picture frame. So we want this first layout to really focus on a big image. Uh, one that is super captivating. Uh, once you figured out which image that is, you can simply drag and drop it in. Now make sure you have the frame selected and drag and drop the image in. Then we have the image and you can either use the shortcut control alt shift C to fit the image, or you can right click on it, go to fitting and fit frame proportionally. If we press W, you can get a nice preview of what that page looks like. Now I also like to accompany it with another image on the top here. Um, something that has the same theme as the other image. Um, so I'm just going to drag and drop another image in. And again, we're going to use the same shortcut key. Okay. Now the nice thing with uh, InDesign is that you can crop this photo with your picture frame. You can also double click into it, uh, move it up and down. I'm gonna keep it as is. So we are going to now want to create our title block. I'm gonna go ahead and create a nice text box here. And I'm just gonna type in title here. Now you guys can use whichever font you guys want, but obviously make this a little bit bigger. One I've been using recently is Sophia Pro. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool font, but if you guys don't want to pay for something like this, this is not a free font, then you can use things like Futura or Lado, which are also very, very good fonts. So we have the title block there, and we now we just wanted to fill it in with um, text. So I'm going to just do a simple uh, two column text here. Now we don't want this to take up the entire thing. We want a little bit of white space on the left side. So I'm gonna make a text box that's slightly smaller than our two block here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place a uh, placeholder text in here. I'm gonna change this into our fonts family. And I'm just gonna copy this over for the other column. Now, if we press W, uh, we can see that this page is already coming together. A little trick that I like to do is going to the rectangle tool and over here we have some white space that we really want to bounce out. So we're going to create a, a tiny little triangle, sorry, not triangle, rectangle. And we're just going to fill it in like that. Okay. Switch the color and the fill. And you can already see that it balances out the page a lot more. We can change this uh, to be a little thicker or a little bit thinner, uh, but we can adjust this to our liking. Now, the last thing we want to do to finish this page up is when you have a giant picture like this, you usually want to have some sort of caption. So here I'm going to put in uh, placeholder text. Now we can't really see it. So I'm going to select all of it because it's black on black. Uh, and we're going to go with paper because our paper is white and we want that to match. Uh, with these ones, you always want to again, match your text and make it just a tad smaller because it's more of a caption text. Okay. Um, so you can play around with the position of that and you can already see that this page is already looking really good, but that's it for our first page. Let's move on to our next one. For our next page, we're going to be using a little bit of the text wrap, um, to show off our design. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create just another big page with a one singular image. Um, once you've found that image, just drag and drop it in. And again, same shortcuts. Uh, this time we're going to use a text wrap to make a graphic here and make this page really pop out. The letter I like to always use to demonstrate this is V. So we're going to just drag a simple box, uh, text box. And then we're going to go in here into object and just go ahead and oh, maybe not object. Let me see which one. Sorry. Yeah, it's in type 
and we're just going to create outline for this text. So what that does is instead of a text, it's now a object so we can scale it. Um, I did forget to change the font of this. Usually we don't want the serif fonts that have tails on them uh, when we're trying to do, do a text wrap. Uh, sometimes you do, but usually I don't like to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and undo, change the font of this to our Sophia Pro. And then we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to type, create outline. And I'm just going to scale this up so you guys can see it. Okay. Now we have an object for this. Uh, because the picture for... Uh, because the picture, big picture that we're using is more on the darker side, we're going to change this into a lighter V. So it's going to be a white V. If you press W, you can see that V is right there. Um, and we're going to accompany it with some text. So maybe the text is two blocks like this. And then placeholder. And we're just going to, again, change this to white. And we are going to set up a text wrap on this V. Uh, how you do that is go into Windows and check on the Text Wrap tab. You can also place it over here into your quick bars. And we just want to make this V wrap whatever is around it. So the one I like to use here is Wrap Around Object Shape. And just put a nice 0.2 inch margin on it. Uh, that just means whatever you have, there's an outline and it pushes the text outside of this thin line here. So now you can see if we move our text in to where the V is, it'll wrap around the V. Uh, and I like to just get the V clipping a little bit outside the page. Um, and then maybe this just fits in the grid, something like this. Again, play around with this until uh, it makes sense for whatever you're trying to do, right? And then we can uh, drag this out a little bit so the V is in the frame, but not taking up a lot of it. Okay, so something like that, you guys can play around with this, but uh, this is just really using the text wrap to kind of showcase what we can do with it. Now, uh, once we have that, we want to balance it out with the other page. So um, first thing I want to do is anchor it with the picture always. Um, so we are going to just drag and drop. This is the other way to import. So you, you see a little icon uh, and then you can basically drag however big you want the image to be. Now I'm just going to scale this so that it fits in our grid. Maybe it'll take up the bottom part of our page just to anchor it. Now you, you can notice that this page itself, sorry, not this page, but this picture itself is not going to be full bleed, meaning the margin that you can actually see, right? Unlike this big image over here. So now that we have that, we're going to use some of our uh, same tricks. So we're going to fill this up with two columns of text. Again, not really taking up the entire column. Uh, and we want the column of text to be really an extension of the picture, okay? Um, so I'm going to change this to our Sophia Pro Lights. And just duplicate this to meet the margin over here. Okay, uh, it's a little bit tight on the bottom, so I'm going to drag it up just a tad. Here you can see what I mean by sometimes the, the grid, we have to kind of break the layout. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's cool to kind of break the layout sometimes. Just do it at your own discretion. Uh, we're going to use the same trick here just to balance out the white space. Maybe this one goes all the way. There you go. Uh, maybe drag this out just a tad. And again, we would want some sort of caption text next to this image. So we're going to turn on our grid again, go into our text box and just drag out a little caption box. Uh, place it with placeholder text. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And always, always change it into our font. Now, if we want this to align maybe to the right, we can do that up here. And if we just zoom out, it's already looking pretty good. But yeah, that'll include, uh, that'll, sorry, uh, conclude our first part uh, with the two image based ones. If you guys have learned anything and enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, make sure you guys stay tuned for part two. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.